We often wonder, as we look out in the chaos of this world, who's in charge? Is God really winning? What happens to us Christians in the end if we remain faithful to God? Daniel 7, verses 8 through 14, and 26 through 27, actually the whole chapter if you want to read it, shows us a vision of what is going on in the spiritual realm and a promise of what happens to evil. We come in the middle of in verse 8, we come in the middle of Daniel's vision of multiple beasts and horns, which are scary and boastful, and, and represent the kingdoms of this world and the evil things that are coming up against God. And let's go ahead and, and read that passage. Again, it's Daniel chapter 7, verses 8 through 14, and then 26 through 27. While I was contemplating the horns, this is Daniel talking, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them, and three of the first horns were pulled out by the roots before it, and behold, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth uttering great boasts. I kept looking until the thrones were set up and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His vesture was like white snow and the hair of his head was pure wool and his throne was ablaze with flame. Its wheels were a burning fire. A river of fire was flowing out and coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands were attending him and myriads and myriads were standing before him. The court sat and the books were open. Then I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words which the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain, and its body was destroyed, and given to the burning fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but an extension of life was given to them for an appointed period of time. I kept looking in my night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man was coming, and he came up to the Ancient of Days, and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all the peoples and nations and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. Daniel asks for an interpretation of this dream, and he goes into it and it concludes in verse 26. But the court will sit for judgment, and the horn's dominion will be taken away, annihilated, and destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions will serve and obey him. So as we look out into this world, into the chaos, into the evil, into all the things that are happening, into the wars, what can we learn from this ancient encouragement to God's people from the prophet Daniel? I think we can learn at least five things. One of those things is there will be terrifying opposition to God. As we look out and as we see the opposition, it's scary. Daniel is deeply disturbed. He doesn't understand what's going on. He sees the beasts. He sees the horns. And he is freaked out. He says that he, can, he can't sleep. He turns pale as he looks at what the, the horn is saying, at the boasts of the horn. And he doesn't understand how this can continue, and how anything can win against that. However, when God shows up, there's no contest whatsoever between God and these evil beings. God's throne and dominion are far more awesome, far more amazing, far more powerful than anything evil can think of or conjure up. He is attended on a throne of fire. Its seat is fire. God is this white, blazing figure. And he's this river of fire goes out from his throne. And he is attended by thousands upon thousands of angels and myriads upon myriads. And the, in Revelation, echoing this passage, says that all of these people praise him continually from every tribe and tongue and language and nation before the throne and before the Son of Man forever. God's Throne and dominion are far more awesome than evil can, can conjure up. And when God judges, his judgment is swift and final. There's no contest. There's no duality. There's no evenness between good and evil. There's nothing that evil can do against God. God shows up. The books are open. The court is set. The beast is judged. And the throne is thrown, is thrown to the lake of fire. There's no fighting. There's no contest. There's no long struggling between the horn and God, when the books are open, when God decides to judge, there's absolutely no contest. God judges, and his judgment is passed, and that's it. He wins, and 
the evils and the powers and the principalities of this world are thrown into judgment. And then Daniel keeps looking, and he sees Jesus show up. Jesus in this passage is called the Son of Man. And Jesus himself calls himself the Son of Man, based on this passage, over 80 times in the Gospels. Let me read that again. I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a Son of Man was coming, and he came up to the Ancient of Days, and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all the peoples and nations of every man and every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. Jesus is given authority. He has the same authority of God. He is comes up to God, and the Ancient of Days, our Father, God, and God, the Eternal God, gives Jesus all authority. In fact, Jesus says, "All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me." And then He commissions us to go and make disciples. Jesus is given glory. He's not only given authority, but he is given glory, which means that he is given honor and praise and exaltation. He is given sovereign power. He becomes sovereign over everything that, that is and was and is to be. Jesus defeats death, which is our final enemy. And when he ascends to heaven, he sits at the right hand of God, and he is given all authority and all power, and he is ultimately sovereign over everything that is happening in this world. And the Son of Man is given an everlasting kingdom. This kingdom began on the day of Pentecost, possibly before, depending on your, your timing, when Jesus went back into heaven. And this kingdom will last forever. It won't end. It has begun and will continue forever. And the sovereignty, dominion, and greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heavens will be given to the people who are saints of the highest one. That's you. If you're following God, if you have trusted in the Son of Man, you are given the same sovereignty, dominion, and greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heavens. And we can rest assured. We can get, be calm and peaceful because... Jesus has established his kingdom. The Son of Man has established his kingdom. And we who trust in the Son of Man will be given that same authority and power and dominion. And we will be given part in this kingdom that lasts forever. Nothing can take it away. It cannot be taken away from the, the one who has authority and sovereign power. And he loves us and trusts us with that kingdom. And we participate in that kingdom from when we trust in Jesus and are obedient to him in baptism until forever. So as you look out into this evil and chaos in this world, remember, there's no contest between good and evil. Evil is easily, completely, and finally crushed by God. There is no duality. There is no contest. Evil does not wrestle with God. God is fully sovereign and fully able to destroy evil in the judgment. The Son of Man, Jesus, rules and reigns. And you, as his followers, will inherit this everlasting kingdom. Be encouraged by this passage in Daniel chapter 7. It's really not that hard to understand. We who follow the Son of Man, are in the kingdom of the Ancient of Days. And we serve a king who fully and defeat and completely crushes and defeats evil and calls us to be part of his kingdom and to reign and to rule with him from when we trust in him until forever. What is your next step? Now that you know what this passage is about, let's pray. Father, you are amazing. You are the king. There's no name. There is no kingdom. There is no power. There is nothing that compares to you. And we 
want to follow you and we want to be free and we want to be safe. Help us to rest in the arms of your Son, the Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus our Savior, in whose blessed and awesome name we pray. Amen.